Okay, we're going to take a look at how to create tic-tac-toe using processing in Python, and uh, this is part of our assignment for class, and we'll just get started with a screen size of 800 and 600. And I think, you know, there's going to be some initial planning steps that uh, you'll need to do as part of this assignment. Um, but in these videos, I'm, I'm going to try to go through quickly uh, each step of the process without giving away the whole thing. And I think a good starting point is to simply try drawing the screen. Now this is kind of assuming you've gone through some pencil and paper planning. But we're going to draw the screen. Um, and uh, that'll be kind of our starting point for today. I think a really good thing to remember what to do when you are to get started with this is to remember that you can um, print the position of a mouse click by uh, using your mouse pressed function and placing a, this is basically, the brackets just make this kind of like a mini list almost like a, a two things that can be printed as once and we'll just print where the click was. So if I have a screen roughly this size, you know, maybe I want the tic-tac-toe board to be kind of like this here and over here I've got some kind of information like instructions or maybe uh, maybe it can play multiple games and um, so I've got some kind of score there or something like that. So if I were thinking I wanted to kind of have the top corner of my scoreboard there, then maybe I could print them out and um, start looking at the numbers and start putting together my, my screen. For this video, you know, I'm just going to, I, I'm going to place a rectangle in the top corner and make it 100 by 100. I think what I'll do, just to make things simple, is I'll just make a game board that's got easy to uh, easy to kind of uh, calculate numbers. So the game board, this would be the size of a square on my game board. I think I'll do it this size. So I'll do kind of three three uh, rows of or three columns, I should say, of this size, and three rows of it as well. So. Um, You know, I'll use a for loop for a moment. So I'm going to draw three of them, and they're each going to be at position. This is 200 wide, so I want to go up by values of 200, and I want to. do the same thing for rows, so I'll do a Y loop. And be the same thing, 200 times Y. Okay, so you can see, and this is exactly, it's going to be exactly 600 tall, so it's, it's using up the whole kind of game board. Now, this isn't I'm not saying this is how to draw the game board. You know, typically you have a line that goes from the top down to the bottom, two vertical lines and two horizontal lines. This might help you visualize it, and this might help you get some coordinates to um, figure out where to draw these things. So I, I'm just going to keep this as my game board. Again, I don't expect yours to look like this. I don't want it to look like this. You need to customize yours, but let's keep this code for now. Let's keep it for a reason, which is it will make it easier for us to detect where things are clicked or where, I'm going to keep drawing for a moment, where to place things. Like So for instance, let's say I wanted a O in the top left corner, then I could use an ellipse. Now remember that ellipses are drawn by their center point, which means that we have to draw the ellipse according to the, this, the middle of this rectangle. 
and it's 200 wide, so the middle is 100, 100. And then, you know, what's the width we want? You can decide this yourself. I'm going to make it that size. And uh, so left, top left, O. Okay, so maybe that looks good for the top left O. And I'll just comment that out for a minute. Let's draw top left X. Well, you have a few options here. You could create two lines. So the first line goes from the, let's just do it from corner to corner. So we'll go from this point is 0, 0, and this is 200, 200. This is X is 200, but Y is 0. And down here is X is 0, Y is 200. So that gets us a square, or sorry, an X in that position. Or you might try playing around with the text command and actually drop an X on the screen and make it big and do it that way. I know this is going to be too small, it's going to look kind of funny, but um, that can get you some uh, that can get you some uh, access to fonts where you can make some X's that look a little different. I'm not seeing it on there. Maybe it's really tiny or maybe I've positioned it somewhere strange. Should be able to see it. Position it right in the middle of that. Hmm. I'll come back to that. So I've drawn the first position and I'll leave it to you, you to continue with that. So that's drawing the game where that gets us started. You really, you can imagine, for instance, if we're going to use variables, we'll do this in the next step. Let's say we had um, a variable for each position on the board. So let's say we had a variable called top left, just to kind of keep it uh, descriptive and I set it to zero which means no one's played there and you could imagine later if I wrap these in if statements I could then find out hey did player let's say player one is the circle and player there's the elif so that's this is an if statement I'll go into this in the next video but um, So well, actually it's supposed to be here. So right now top left is uh, a zero. So let's not mix up zero and O's, but now it's a one, player one played there, so it should be an O. And now it's a two, so it should be an X. Now we can control the game board based on currently just one variable, but we'll have multiple. So that's where we're going next. But first, if you get this game board drawn, if you organize it similarly to this, maybe uh, make sure you've got your comments in there, and then we'll look at uh, figuring out how to go to the next step.